Gracias, señor. Well, I'm just doing my job, mister. I'm a, I'm a Texas Ranger. Reese Bennett's the name. Permit me to introduce my father. Don Miguel de la Rio Real. This is my sister, Doña Dolores. And I am Don Carlos. Well, now, I'm, I'm mighty pleased to meet you folks. I'm just, just sorry that this here had to happen. Uh, how bad is that, anyway? Uh, 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 por favor. I... I have a last request to make of you, Senor Bennett. Well, uh, whatever I can do, Don Miguel. Watch over my daughter and my son. They come from a far different environment in Spain. And I feel that they will not long survive in this primitive land. Please. Well, a uh, sure thing, Don Miguel. I'll keep an eye on him. I surely will. Gracias, senor. My son, a este hombre bravo se da una porción de la nuestra tierra. Sí, padre mío. It shall be as you say. Señor Bennett. Sí. For saving our lives and promising to help us, my father wishes you to have a share in our family land grant. Well, now, shucks, I, I wouldn't want any part of your ranch. No, sir, no. Senor Bennett, the Del Laredo land grant covers the entire city of Laredo and most of the county. Huh. <laughs> Papa. Oh, Father. Senor Bennett. See? Si? Would you be so kind to take my sister on into Laredo and the Baruch? Oh, more than glad to, Don Carlos. More than glad to. Gracias. If you will uh, leave your horse for me, I will uh, stay behind to take care of my father. Sure thing, Don Carlos. Sure thing. We'll, uh, we'll meet you at the hotel when, when you're finished. You can rise from the dead now, Miguel. They are gone. <laughs> bueno. <laughs> well. I have done my part, amigo. <laughs> I forged the land grant, which is a true masterpiece of my art. And then I slipped the record of it into the files of the land commission. <laughs> now it is your turn. <laughs> See, Miguel, you have done marvels. And now, with a ranger like Senor Bennett, whom we have so carefully selected to be our partner and guardian, it should be simple enough for me to take over Laredo. I see. And the county. <laughs> Well done, muchachos. And now, you and I, we must disappear for a while. Hey. After you dig Don Miguel's grave. <laughs> and you dig Laredo's. Just a minute. Would you mind repeating that? I said they own Laredo and most everything else in the county, too. That's what I thought you said. They want to make me a partner. 
What do you think of that, huh? I think someone's crazier than popcorn on a hot stove. That's what I think. What do you think, Chad? Well, I would say that a certain party who shall remain nameless, but whose initials are Reese Bennett, is off his mental reservation. Yeah, well, it just might be you two guys who... Uh, Reese, it, where it, are it, the Charlatans now? They're over at the hotel in the governor's suite. I, I just took Donna Dolores right on in there, her, her being upset about her, her pa's death and all, you know. Her brother, Don Carl, is, is following as soon as he buries his pa. Well, what are you gonna do, Captain? Remember, they're orphans. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Reese. But they're also probably crookeder than a bunch of snakes in a cabbage patch. Oh, now, Captain, you got them all wrong. They're real quality folk. I mean, a real nice family, and they're warm and close. So far, so good. Carry them here. Miguel and the others will be waiting for us at San Ignacio at the abandoned mission, just across the border from Mexico. I don't like it, Carlos. I don't like pretending to fall in love with another man. I know, Dolores. But there is so much riding on this for us. Our whole future together, with all the money we could ever wish for. If this works here, Bella, Mia, there is no limit to what we can claim the next time. In New Mexico or Arizona. See, I know, but I... There are no buts, amor mio. You must put stars in the eyes of Senor Bennett so that we can put wealth in our pockets. Remember, Karina, we are supposed to be brother and sister in mourning for our dear departed papa. You Don Carlos del Rey Real? Si, sí, I'm Don Carlos. And uh, who may I ask, senor, are you? Oh, uh, Don Carlos. This is Captain Parmley, my boss. He's the CEO of the Rangers. Well, come on in, Captain. Any friend of Senor Isis is a friend of ours. Did he tell you that he saved our lives? One man against three desperados, or was he too modest? Uh, oh, no, ma'am. He, uh, he wasn't too modest. No. No, ma'am, he wasn't. He told us all about it. Oh, uh, Donna Dolores and Don Carlos, these two characters are Rangers, too. That's Joe Riley, Chad Cooper. Tanto gusto en conocer la señorita. El gusto es mío. Placer. Uh, Don Carlos, Reese says you claim to have an old land grant for these parts. Would you care to see the documents, Capitan? Very much. King Ferdinand VI gave it to my family in 1750 for services rendered the crown. It was lost for over a hundred years, only recently uncovered in the archives at El Escorial. Very convenient. Um, would you mind if I borrow this for a few days to verify its authenticity? I'm sorry, Capitan. But I'm sure you can understand why I could not let so precious a document out of my sight. However, the land commission in the state capital will verify its authenticity. I've already wired Austin. Good. I want everyone here to be completely satisfied concerning the legitimacy of our claim. And if that document does prove out, that'll mean there's not a legal deed or title in the whole city of Laredo. Or I venture to say, anywhere else in the county. And nothing except for 400 square miles that belong to you and Donna Dolores, sir. And senores. Oh, you're not, you're not really going to give him a share in this. Oh, see, si. One tenth of everything we own goes to Senor Bennett. Oh, I have already prepared the uh, paper of partnership, which as long as you gentlemen are here, I would ask you to witness. Oh. Evitan. Gracias. Well, now, shucks, that's, uh... That's mighty kind of you, but it's like I already said, I, I couldn't take any part of your inheritance. Oh, senores, it was my father's dying wish. And I promised him I would carry it out. You cannot refuse. You would not break a promise to a dying man, would you? Oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am, I'd, I'd never do a thing like that. Then you will accept. Well, uh, <laughs> seeing as how you put it that way, I, I guess I'll just have to, huh? Bueno. <laughs> Reese, now doesn't it concern you the people here are going to lose everything they worked all their lives for? Well, uh, now, Captain, I sure wouldn't want to have nothing to do with that. Oh, please believe us, senor. We do not wish to be cruel. But after all, Laredo was founded by our great-great-grandfather, and the town does bear the family name. See, there are many sentimental associations for us here. 
Unfortunately, however, with the recent political troubles in Spain, our family fortunes have very seriously declined. In fact, Senor, this land grant is all that remains to us. Without it, we have nothing, no way to live. <laughs> so you see, we cannot just give the land away to others who already have more than we, the rightful owners, do. Oh, but Carlos has a plan, and it will be fair to all. Oh? What had you in mind? Uh, no offense, Capitan, but I think I should first discuss it with the Presidente of your bank to see if it is feasible. Well, let's hope it is feasible, if it comes to that. I'll tell the bank president, Mr. O'Connell, you might be in to see him. Gracias, senor. But please, tell the Presidente that I will be in to see him. Reese, I'm giving you a leave of absence when the range is starting now. A leave of absence? But why, Captain? You can't wear two hats, owner and enforcer. Captain's right, Reese. That'd be like having your cake and eating it, too. Besides, you'll probably want the time to cut up the county with your new partners. What do you think, Captain? They're not at all what I expected. I'll be at the bank. Let me know if you hear any word from Austin. Yeah, we will. Did you see the way old Donna Dolores looked at Reese? Yeah, I did. Just like it was love's young dream. Hey, about that document, you don't think there's anything to it, do you? Oh, no. No, I guess not. Couldn't be. <laughs> no, it couldn't be. Don Reese, Lord of Laredo. <laughs> what if it is true? I tell you, it can't be. Buenas tardes, senores. Hi, folks. Gentlemen, the Del Laredo's Real. Donna Dolores, Don Carlos. Your Excellencies. And to what do we owe the honor of your visit to this humble depository? We have come to place important documents in your vault. Are those the papers, by any chance, that will prove we're all squatters? Squatters? That's what this makes everybody. You know what this means, Joe? I know what means old Reese is going to have enough money to burn a wet mule. Chad, huh. you don't think something like this is going to go to his head, do you? Like maybe he'd want to get out of the Rangers and start running around with that society crowd and forget his old pal? Joe, it's up to us to see that he doesn't. If old Reese Bennett's going to be a wealthy land baron, then it's just up to us to be his number one knights. Yeah, his uh, protectors, uh, tutors, and true blue troubleshooters. As well as the beneficiaries of his good fortune. Yeah. Thanks. Here you are, Don Carlos. The receipt for your important documents. Gracias. Uh, what do you say, Reese? If you're going to be the Lord of Laredo, does that mean that the rest of us will be your vassals and have to pay tribute to you? Uh, that's right, if you've got anything left to pay it with. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? That means that we have the answer from the land commissioner. Kevin? It confirms their claim. Congratulations, uh, Reese, uh, old buddy. Uh, Never doubt it for a second was on the up and up, old rich man there. All right, everybody, calm down. Calm down. Certainly puts a different complexion on things, doesn't it? Oh, Donna Dolores, please. Thank you, Senor O'Connor. Uh, this lady and gentleman seem like reasonable people. And we all know Reese Bennett here. I'm sure we'll be able to work something out. Uh, Don Carlos. Captain Palmley, I believe, said something about a plan you wanted to discuss with me. See, si. Doña Dolores, Senor Reese, and I are all agreed that our last wish is to hurt anyone. Rather, our aim and our hope is to help. Well, that's mighty fine of you. That's all I have to say. Right, folks? <laughs> I think I speak for all the landowners, uh, that is, the former landowners of Laredo and Environs, when I say that we would be willing to do almost anything to prevent eviction, after all the years of hard work we've put in developing the land and its resources. Just exactly what did you have in mind, Don Carlos? We thought we could organize the Del Laredo Land Company and allow the people to buy the land back from us. Yeah. They could pay with whatever cash they had, and we could issue mortgages for the balance at a low rate of interest. Uh, do you think it might work? I'm sure of it. We would, of course, need your help to straighten out everything. To make sure it was legal, proper, and fair. I'd be delighted. 
Oh, you, you could open up your office right here in the bank. In fact, I want you to consider the resources of the Bank of Laredo at your complete disposal. You are most kind, Senor O'Connell. In fact, I uh, would like to open a line of credit. Consider it open, Don Carlos. No limit. Uh, you too, Reese. Oh, <laughs> maybe I better start calling you Mr. Bennett from now on. Well, Mr. O'Connell, I wouldn't know who you was talking to. <laughs> Don Carlos, I want to thank you on behalf of all of us for... Hold on there, O'Connell. I'd kind of like to speak for myself, if you don't mind. And maybe for some of the others around here who might see it my way. Jim Lynch, he owns a big spread just north of here. Uh, what way is that, Jim? Well, I ain't about to be stampeded into giving over my life savings and mortgaging my future for land I already own. Well, that's just the point, Jim. You don't own it. They do. Well, I got a deed says that land is all mine. Free and clear, fair and square. And it's gonna take a lot more than a telegraph from Austin to convince me otherwise. And if any of you feel the same way, You'd be doing yourselves a favor by joining me and hiring the best lawyer in Texas to fight this. I guess some of us have to learn the hard way. Well, no, never mind about them, Don Carlos. Suppose we work out the details of your plan while I show you around our... <laughs> that is, show you around your little town. An excellent suggestion, Senor O'Connell. Uh, Doña Dolores. Hmm. Uh, Captain, this don't mean I have to quit the Rangers, does it? You just consider yourself in an extended leave of absence, Reese, because as far as I'm concerned, this matter is far from being settled. Well, Reese, uh, I guess you'll be forgetting about us. $40 a month, nobody's now, huh? Well, now, what do you mean by that? Well, well, you're going to be traveling around with all them society folks, all them rich and famous people. The fact of the matter is, Reese, you're going to be one of them. Well, uh, yeah, I guess I am at that, huh? Yeah, which means, Reese, that you're going to have to learn to dress and act like them, too. Oh, that Donna Dolores. Ain't she just pretty in a heart flush? Ain't she just pretty in a heart flush, that girl? Of course, I couldn't help noticing. She's a... she get the care fires for you, boy. Yeah, she, uh... She did kind of take for me, didn't she? Yeah, well, well, she didn't even give Joe or me a second look. And I'll tell you something about a lady like that, Reese. With a real refined lady, you've got to learn to be a real gentleman. Well, now, you two know there ain't nothing in the whole world that'd make me a gentleman, nothing. Why not, Reese? Gentlemen are made, they're not born. And that's right. Who would learn me? Who do you think? Well, now, who can you always depend on? Captain Barmley? Us! What are buddies for, Reese? Why, we're your buddies through thick and through thin. Rich or poor. All for one. And one for all. Ha, ha, that just goes to prove one thing. You never know who your friends are until, until you really need them. All right, fellas. Make me a gentleman. Well, where do we start? Well, now, the first thing we got to get us. You, sir is a swank room over at the hotel. That's right. And the next thing we gotta get you is the finest tailor in the state of Texas. Senores, you would not desert me now, would you? Oh, no, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I'd never do a thing like that. What has he got that we don't? Well, for one thing, her. Yeah. And for another, Unlimited credit. I feel like I'm gonna bust right out of this monkey suit. Why do people have to have so many different duds for anyway? The clothes make the man, Reese. Yeah, well, the question is, make him what? I never had no more than a spare pair of britches and long johns my whole life. And I done all right. Well, now that might have been good enough for the old Reese Bennett, but not for the new one. No, sir. -y. Well, look at him, would you? Fitting's all over with? Well, I sure hope so. Taylor just left. Good, good. Oh, Joe, Captain wants to see you over in the office for that uh, a new assignment. 
Oh, oh, that one. Well, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get right on over there. Yeah. Adios, Mr. Bennett. <laughs> All right, Reese. Time for your fencing lesson. What do I need with fencing lessons? From now on, I can hire people to build all the fences I ever want. Not that kind of fencing, Reese. With foils. Reese, these are for dueling. When a gentleman has his honor besmirched, he issues a challenge, you see. What'd you do that for? That's a challenge. That's a challenge. <laughs> Didn't even smirch me a little bit. Reese, it's the principle of the thing. And after the challenge, you allow your opponent his choice of weapons. Supposing he picks guns. A real first-class gentleman of quality always selects foils. You see, they're, uh, je ne sais quoi, hmm, more elegant, no? Where'd you learn all about this, anyway? Oh, Reese, I'd hate to bore you with all the lurid details of my misspent youth. Now, first thing you have to do is salute your opponent. First he smirches me, then I gotta salute the slob. We're speaking of gentlemen, Reese. All right. Not that kind of salute, Reese. It's like this, watch. Okay? Go ahead. That's fine. All right, now, come on back here. Now watch, I'm gonna show you some more things. You watch me real close, okay? On gal. Got that? On gal. Advance. Lunge, parry, repost, touche. Huh, is that all there is to it? Reese, it took me three years to learn how to do that much correctly. Well, you must be an awful slow learner, Chad. Come on, I'll take you on. On guard. All right, Reese. Ready? Attack. Not like that, Reese. Reese, that's not the way it's done. Reese, will you, will you stop that now? Reese. <laughs> Reese. Touche. We'll say something. One lesson and a beat you. Uh, a teacher's greatest joy is in his pupil's success. Well, I guess, uh, I guess I just got a natural talent for using foils. <laughs> yeah. He's a natural for them to use as a foil. She's got old Reese a moon eyed. He couldn't see it if they stole the brand right off his horse. That's why I don't want him in on this yet. Everything set? Said, Captain. Donna Dolores and Reese ought to be taking their daily paseo any time now. Let's go over the bank. Hmm. One hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred. Five. And here, senor, is a copy of your mortgage with a balance. I am glad I was able to help you. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> How'd you do? Oh, oh, one moment, boys. One moment. We're all mighty grateful to you, Don Carlos, for what you're doing for us. De nada. Are you ready for the next one? In a moment. But first, there is something I would like to discuss with you. Oh, nothing wrong, I hope. Oh, nothing that cannot be worked out to our mutual satisfaction, Senor O'Connell. Please, sit down. Oh, thank you. As the uh, banker and financial advisor to the Del Laredo Land Company, I would like you to become a member of our board of directors. I'd be honored. And because of the interlocking nature of our concerns, and uh, in view of the fact that a large part of the bank's assets now consist of the deposits of my sister and I, and uh, Senor Reese, we thought it would be sound policy if we were named to the bank's board of directors. Yes. Yeah. I can see the advantages of such an arrangement, Don Carlos. Bueno, then we are agreed. Agreed. Good. <laughs> I think now we are ready for the next applicant, Senor O'Connor. Fine. I suppose this is what you'd call land office business, huh? More like highway robbery. Yeah. Here they come. You know what to do. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, 
that's him. I'd like to take another look at that Del Laredo land grant you've got in the vault. Why, is anything the matter? Well, nothing I know of. Just routine, checking its security. Mix, maybe, with a little non-official curiosity for another look. <laughs> sure thing. Glad to oblige, Captain. I'll wait here. There we are, Captain. All safe and sound. Maybe we'll go out and have a picnic. Huh? How would that be? I beg your pardon. Why don't you look where you're going, dude? I said I was sorry, mister. Oh, yellow, too, huh? What? Do not pay any attention to him, senor. He's just looking for a fight. Why don't you go out and hunt up something to use for a backbone, dude, and quit hiding behind the skirts of this little enchilada here? All right, mister. Now you just gone too far. What do you think you're doing with those sissy gloves? I'm challenging you to a duel for smirching me and this lady here. What's your choice of weapons? This! That's the same one, all right, Captain. I haven't had anything stolen out of this vault, and I dare say I never will. Oh, excuse me, Captain. It sounds like some kind of a fuss going on outside. Ruffian from attacking Mr. Bennett. Good thing, Mr. O'Connell. What's the big idea attacking Mr. Bennett, you ruffian? But you told me. Oh. Some rowdy was attacking Mr. Bennett. Seems like everything's in order, Mr. O'Connell. Fine. I'm sorry, Donna Dolores, uh, about fighting like that. I, I mean using my fist in, instead of them fouls. Foils. Foils. I think you are most gallant. Did you see? He protected me from a most offensive man. He's turning out to be a regular Sir Walter Raleigh. Who's he? I will tell you all about him, senores. But first, I have more important news. You have just been made a member of the board of directors of the bank. Congratulations. But I don't know nothing about banking. <laughs> to be a successful banker, senorese, the most important thing is to have money. The next thing is to have friends who know what to do with it. You happen to have both. You will excuse us, gentlemen? Sure. You get it, Kevin? Mm-hmm. I'm heading for Austin right now. He really stands a chance with her. I don't know, Joe. It's granted he's not what you'd call an irresistible force, but on the other hand, she may not be an immovable object either. Would you mind putting that in simple English for me? What I mean, Joe, is that she might see something in Risa we don't. I mean, something that a woman like her is looking for, as incredible as that might sound. Oh, Chad, if this keeps up any longer, Risa's just liable to leave the Rangers for good. <laughs> Not that we need the big lug around, you know. No. It might be a whole lot easier just, just keeping it, though, than it would be breaking in a new saddle mate. Yeah, I know what you mean, Joe. It's kind of like having a wall-eyed horse in the desert. He ain't much good, but he's better than nothing, right? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Chad? Yeah? Hey, you reckon we ought to do something about it? I do, Joe. I purely do. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> oh, hi there, fellas. mad at me or something? Well, why should we be mad at you, Reese? Well, then what's the matter? We ought to tell him, Chad, for old time's sake. Oh, well, I guess maybe we should, Joe, for his own good. Sit down, Reese. Now, Reese, Joe and me, well, we've taught you all we know. And it's, it's time now for you to move onward and upward and, and leave us behind. What do you mean? You see, you're rich and powerful now, Reese. You don't need a couple of $40 a month rangers dragging you down. Fact is, Reese, you've outgrown us. No, I haven't. Oh, that's big of you to say that, Reese, but... Well, Joe and me, we've been watching, and we've seen the way things have been going. What things? And going where? Doña Dolores. Besides, Reese, we knew you'd be leaving us sooner or later for good anyway. Well, I like it here. Why would I want to leave? Forsaken all others. <laughs> oh, Reese, you're a lucky man. And you gotta admit, Reese, that you wouldn't win no no good looking contest down at the county fair. But I don't care. You don't. You don't like her? Well, uh, of course I do. Your intentions are honorable, aren't they, Reese? Never give much thought to it. Reese Bennett. You're not leading this lady down the garden path. I never let her down no path. I was just trying to help. Congratulations. She's a wonderful girl. So what if you won't be in the Rangers anymore? What are you going to be losing? Nothing. Just nothing except riding all day and weeks on end, chasing outlaws across the country, sleeping under the stars. Yeah. Well, and danger. Being shot at, trying to uphold the law. Moving from place to place. No roots nowhere. Well, you're footloose. Just a drinking and a brawling. Yeah. You see, Reese, the important thing to remember is that you're giving all this up for something much better. Joe's right, Reese. Just think there's no more risk in your life for chicken feed. You're gonna be in a big, safe, comfortable office. Nine to five, six days a week. And then home to that little lady. Fifty-two weeks a year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you are a lucky man, Reese. Chad? Yeah. Chad, what do you say we go over to the saloon and have a drink and celebrate Reese's future happiness? Good idea. With pleasure, Joe. Not you, Reese. You can't afford to be seen in the saloon with people like us. Why not? Well, it would hurt you socially. Well, now I can afford it, fellers. I'll buy. Sorry, Reese, but it's better if we make a clean, quick break. That way it doesn't hurt so much in the long run. Michael Mios. Something very important to say. Of course, senor. Thank you, ma'am. Well, now, well, now, ma'am, I, I, I don't want you should misunderstand what I'm going to say. Because you're prettier than a, a spotted dog under a red wagon, and, and, and sweeter than a, a whole sack of sugar, and, and, and gentler than a, than a full-fed heifer. Just about everything, uh, everything a man would want in a woman. Any man in his right mind had, had considered a, an honor and a privilege, just, just if you give him a second look. Oh, gracias, senores. I'm very flattered that you have such a high opinion of me. And, ma'am, uh, just look at me. I ain't really nothing much. I'm, I'm uglier than a horned toad and, and, and meaner than a, a, a centipede with chillblains. Oh, well, I think you're too harsh on yourself, senor. No, ma'am, I'm, I'm just speaking the facts, ma'am. I'm just a... Just a no account who don't know how to talk or dress or act proper like at all. I just ain't no gentleman, ma'am. Like a lady like you deserves. Oh. Sit down, senores. Come on. Come on. Now, 
It takes much more than pretty manners, or clothes, or speech to make a real gentleman. It's something you already have inside you. A great deal of kindness, respect, consideration. Well, thank you, ma'am. Is that what you wanted to tell me? Well, no, there... There is something more, ma'am. Ma'am, I ain't cut out to be no banker or land baron. I'm just a redneck ranger who's who's out of place in offices and, and setting rooms and, and everything like that. Well, what do you want, senor? Well, Donna Dolores, no offense, but it's better, better to have a, a clean, quick break. And, and in the long run, it doesn't hurt so much. Please, ma'am. I want out of the whole deal. Of course, Senor Reese. When my father gave you the share in our land grant, he meant it as a reward, not as a punishment or a millstone around your neck. Thank you, Senor O'Connor. Mm. We wish you to be happy. So if you wish our partnership dissolved, so shall it be. Well, now, I, I sure appreciate that, Don Carlos. You're a most unusual man, Senor Reese. Most men would lie, steal, even kill for what you are giving away. What's the matter? Oh. Of course. I completely forgot. I sent that document to Austin the other day for re-registering. But do not worry, Senor Lise. I will have it rescinded at once. Well, now, just as long as we agree, Don Carlos. And thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> do not. I locked up out front, Reese. Use this door, please. Buena fortuna, my friend. Who has been in a vault besides the usual personnel? Why, no one. No one? Only Captain Parmley a few days ago. He wanted to make sure the land grant was safe. Very considerate of Captain Parmley. If you need a point for me, I will finish here and lock up. Yes. I'll see you in the morning. Close. Left them back at the hotel. The fancy duds and the doodads. And all them, them crazy ideas about being a gentleman, too. I don't understand you, Reese. You get a good chance to make something out of yourself, and then you just throw it away like an old saddle blanket. Well, I just guess it goes to prove that you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Well, now, whether you fellas like it or not, I am here to stay. <laughs> Why? The point is that Captain Parmalee has taken our land grant from the bank's vault, which explains his hurried leave-taking for Austin. The grant has already been accepted. What can he prove? Perhaps nothing. But there is no use taking even the slightest chance at this stage of the game. Well, what are we going to do? We are leaving to visit friends in Mexico for a while. Taking with us, of course, all the money in the bank's vault. We leave in the morning. Shortly before dawn, while the town is dead to sleep. But uh, with, with all the money gone, what will happen to Senor Reese? Something unpleasant, I predict. If Captain Parmalee discovers our land grant is a counterfeit. After all, he was our entry into Laredo, and he is still on our board of directors and the banks. But the people of the town, they might lynch him when they find their savings gone. Better him than us, my sweet. <laughs> Must be some mistake. Afraid not, Reese. The Delorado land grant of theirs is a forgery. I can prove it. Your feelings were right about this, Captain. All the way down the line. Huh. Oh, well. 
Easy come, easy go. Well, Donna Dolores would never get mixed up in anything shady, I'll tell you that. When I took the grant to the chemist in Austin... You mean you... You, a captain in the Rangers? Captain, you stole that out of the bank. Let's just say I borrowed it for a good cause, Henry's. Where'd they slip up, Captain? The ink. The chemical analysis showed it couldn't be more than a year old, not any 125. Yeah? Well, if that grant's a fake, how come it's on the books in Austin? I'm sure that when we check, we'll find they slipped a match record into land commissioner's files. Well, so far, that's only a guess, Captain. All right, Reese. Let's go over to the hotel. We'll ask the De Laredo's all about it. All right. <laughs> Try the door. Nothing, Captain. Nothing here either. Empty. I'm ruined. We're all ruined. Reese for bringing those Mountie Banks into town, and me for tying up with them. And the people who lost every cent they own. You know, Jediah, they've really got a staked out box to you. and me will spend the rest of our lives in prison. That is, if the people here let us live long enough to get there. And as for you and the rest of the Rangers, you may all be out of jobs. When the people are finished telling the governor that a Ranger helped rob the... You mean, of course, unless the money is recovered and the criminals are brought to justice. Yes, of course, Captain, but can't... They can't have gotten too far in that carriage. I'm sure it shouldn't be too hard to track them down. Captain, sir. I want back in. Funny thing, Reese. I was just about to tell you. Your leave of absence is canceled. The nicest thing about all this money is that it's real, not counterfeit. <laughs> See, Carlo, but without my beautiful counterfeiting, there would be no money. <laughs> Touché. Ah! Ah! choice in this duel is living or dying. I only duel with gentlemen. Well, in that case, it's all right for me to use my fist. What's the name of that fencer maneuver Reese just pulled there, Chad? Oh, I think that's what you call foiling Don Carlos. What you trying to do, Reese? You one-man army? Yeah, get yourself killed? Well, I guess I just got myself all riled up for what they done. Well, you must be the late Don McGill, huh? Si, senor. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Don. There's been a little change in plans. Instead of going into the ground, you're going into the jug. All right, everybody, on your feet and into the carriage. Let's go. One nice thing, you're going to be able to ride to the pokey in style. Well, now, not Donna Dolores. No, sir. No. Why not? Well, now, look, fella. She wasn't in on this. She couldn't have been. Why? She just a. Uh... She just a. Uh... Well, she's just a young girl. And and it was them other fellers. Carlos and McGill there. That's who it was. Ain't that right, Donna Dolores? Oh, now, fellas, I just know she's innocent. I just know it. Because, well, maybe I ain't no gentleman, but I know sure as shooting that Donna Dolores is and always will be a pure lady. Yes, sir. -y. I don't see why we can't just let her go. Reese, you know we got to take her in. You know it. The court's got to make a decision like that. But why can't we no, just... No, 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 Senor Reese. Your friends are right and you are wrong about me and, and about yourself. 
You know, I told you once before, and I meant it. And I mean it now. You are a gentleman. A real gentleman. And not just on the surface like Carlos. Not always taking from others, but giving. And not using people for your own gain. Carlos did, and as I did. I'm so sorry, senor. Well, uh... When we get back to town, I'll... I'll do everything I can to help you, Donna Dolores. Thank you, senores. And I will make sure that no one blames you for any of this. Well, all right, we're all set to leave, Reese. No, you... You and Joe go on with the prisoners, Chad. I'll follow her in a while. Well, what are you so glum about? You ought to be kicking up your heels. Yeah, for what? Well, when you get back to town, you're going to be a hero instead of a 100% bum you were when you left. Right, Joe? Yeah, sure thing, Chad. Well, how about all them bills that run up when they, when they give me all that credit? Well, the reward for the return of that money ought to take care of that easily enough. Sure, and besides that, might even be a little left over. We can have ourselves a ranger celebration. You know, Reese, boy, I sure got to admire you to... The way you strung that Del Laredo gang along, just to use ready to spring your trap. Oh, yeah, Reese, why? Why, you handle that gang like a regular Machiavelli, just, just letting them get overconfident, and then you just stringing them along until they gave themselves away. You sure was a clever devil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I sure was at that, wasn't I? How'd you do it, Reese? Well, I, uh... Reese, why don't, why don't you tell us all about it on the way back, huh? A good idea! <laughs> all right, let's move around. Well, now, boys, I don't want to make it sound like dragon or anything like that. There ain't any sound... Me send for there ain't a banker alive I trust any further than I can throw. Being late giving the bank its money, they'll toss you in the calaboose. Me? I wouldn't toss anybody. We'll open that safe for you, banker. One day in this town. Now, will you just take it easy and let us find out what the trouble is here? You can't get the safe open. We'll open it for you. Yeah. I think maybe we better find some other bank to rob, huh? Well, now, I ain't so sure. Let's hang around a while and see what happens. Next man that takes a step's gonna buy himself a whole boot full of trouble. Just hold on to your britches and you'll get your money. You handle them alone, Chad? Yeah, I'll try. You won't have to make your job. All right. My dear friend, a man in his lifetime comes to many turning points. Things just seem to fall into line. Opportunity presents itself. And many's the man that lets that moment slip by, slither through his fingers, never to return, lets himself be distracted by mundane things. Oh, well, I want to tell you, Major, you'd never do that, never in a million years. And this is that moment for me, Reese. Are you ready? Yes, sir. You betcha you I am. You know, bugles should be blaring, and flags waving, and drums rolling. Let her rip, Major. This is a moment in history 
Can you feel the excitement of it? Huh? Yes, sir, Major. I surely can. Yeah. Oh? Reese, how many Indians are there? Oh, well, uh, pretty many, Major. And the Indians wear blankets for warmth. But what holds those blankets on? Well, nothing. Ah, but in the future, those blankets will be held in place by a cane, hasty and fast fastener. And wagon wheels, too. A cane, hasty and fast fastener on the end of every axle, attached to all removed at the twist of a wrist. Hmm? And harnesses can be repaired on the trail with a cane, hasty and fast fastener. And horse blankets, too. Why, this thing would uh, uh, keep a blanket on a sweating coat. Well, <laughs> right, right, right. I tell you, the uses for this are endless. Oh, I want to tell you, Major, that thing's going to make you just about the richest man in the whole wide world, I'll tell you that. I already am, Reese. I have you for my friend. Oh, now, Major. Major John, I've been looking all over for you. We about got a riot on our hands over there at the bank. The bank? Yeah, the safe door's jammed. You're gonna have to come on over, sir, and get it open for him. Well, I'll be very happy to oblige, Joe. I've got to stop by the shop and get my tools. Oh, uh, uh, Major, Major. Uh, that's my hat, Major. Huh? Well, what happened to my hat? You weren't wearing any, Major. <laughs> Pilford, probably. That hat cost me $30. Well, now, I'm gonna... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Major John, I'm certainly glad to see you. All right, don't get yourself in the lather. Hang these up, will you? Yes, yeah, sure. Now, that is Major John's hat, Reese. This is my hat, Fillmore. Oh, beg your pardon. <laughs> Bank was almost... Hush, hush, Fillmore. Major can't do his work with all this ruckus going on. Sorry, Major John. Uh, give it a good whack on the dial, will you, Reese? Yes, sir, Major. Yes, sir. That's fine. Cold chisel. Hammer. Cold chisel. Hammer. Just like a magic show. Yeah, that's what you got, Major. You got magic in them hands. That's what he got. I don't know what I'd have done. It's a pleasure, Fillmore. All right, Chad, let him in. Right. Okay, boys. Hey, now. Hey, Sap, do you know what we just seen? Seeing the inside of a bank be a pretty hard one to empty. The range office is just around the corner. We're right in. Pretty easy to get in, not so easy to get out. Did you see that little old fella open up that safe? 
Sure. He opened it. Well, what do you want to do? Clean it out right then with the arranger standing there? Oh, Sab, Sab, you you was born mighty long on nerve, but you're awful short on brain. Now See, if I've got brain. Well then use them. Look. Finding him is like finding the key to the door of the mint. If he could open up other safes as easy as he opened up that one, if he was opening them for us. A chihuahua. That man is no bank robber. Besides, what we need with somebody to open up safes? We ride into town, and we make somebody in the bank open his safe for us. We take the money and go. You ain't thinking, Sam. Me up good, uh, you didn't forget nothing, Major. You got it on. Go You see what I say? That face. No, that man is no bank robber. <laughs> no, he ain't. Not yet. How'd you like a double that bet, Bart? You would? <laughs> How long's this been going on, Jack? A little over four minutes. All right, this is your last. Last chance, folks, to get down a wager. I'm giving two to one on the Ranger that it doesn't go the limit. You better make any money, Chad. Just stick to your business, Joe. Come on. I don't see any takers, Chad. All right. Take him down, Joe. What do you think I'm trying to do? You got about eight seconds left. Now we can lose all the money on the table. Now come on. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe. Take him down. Take him down. Four. All the way. Three. Down. Two. Two. Uh, hey, Bart, I, I didn't mean to beat you there. I'm real sorry about that. You, you got a real stout arm. Uh, just take it easy, Rangers. Take it easy. Steve isn't a very good loser. Just give him a minute and he'll apologize. I guarantee you. He's a real nice fellow. Come on, Steve. Come on, Joe. Set him up, Joe. There you go. Joe, come on, Joe. Joe. Come on, now, sit down. <coughs> sit down. Joe, will you just sit down, please? Steve, I, uh, I just want you to know that there ain't gonna be any hard feeling, Bart. You know, I, uh, I just plumb didn't want to do that. But then, uh, but then again, I didn't want folks thinking that somebody can come up and stick it on a ranger and just up and walk away. So now, if you'll give me a minute, I'll come back and apologize. I guarantee it. <laughs> Reese, do you realize that that stage has been in for 20 minutes? Could be my patents came in it in the mail. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... You saw him open that safe. I want to tell you, boys, that man has got magic hands. And my watch. And your hat. The Major has magic hands and taken ways. Well, now, the Major, he just uh, picks up whichever hat happens to be close by. It ain't, ain't like he's stealing. What is it like, Reese? Well, the, the, the Major's got so many inventions and, and, and such like going around his head all the time that, well, he don't even pay no attention to it. 
Well, now you don't dang well he ain't stealing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this works, we'll be setting on top of the world. I don't like sneaking around. All I'm saying is, give it a chance. Look, uh, things are changing too fast nowadays. Uh, there's too many things can go wrong for us to just ride in and take over a bank like we used to do. Sab, answer me this. Since I've been planning our jobs, has anybody took us yet? Does anyone know who we are? Has anyone even come close to catching us? No. So why do it different? We got a good way to work. Good men. What do we need this old man for? Sad. look. Now, there's some banks that are just full of money that we can't touch. For one reason or another, either the, the safe is too tough or there are too many guards or... But with this old man, there ain't a bank in the country that we can't take. I still don't like it. Sad. are we going to have to draw on each other to settle this? <laughs> How about this? We try one bank. Then we decide again. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Now, this is what I was planning. Matt, Lou, Tuck, you three fellas meet us on that little old ridge south of Porfirio tomorrow night. That'll give a Sab, Fred, and me time to go pick up our old man. We grab him. He never opened his safe for us. Freddy here is going to talk him into it. And I lost the keys. Somewhere between here and Porfirio. Yes, I think I ought to be able to turn out at least a couple of hundred a day of my fast fasteners with this machine. And I'm not much for riding. Got thrown twice on the way over here, and I don't know what I'll do. Now, 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 just a minute, son. Nothing is worth getting that bothered over. Now, let's say it again and slower. I work at the bank in Porfirio. Uh, and your boss has gone to El Paso on business. He left me in charge. Mm -hmm. How is old Martin Gale? <laughs> oh, he was a wild one when he was younger. <laughs> I soldiered with him. Oh, we don't talk much about his help. He's a hard man to have for a boss. Oh. I'm just a clerk. Oh, a clerk, I am. Well, he must think an awful lot of you to put you in charge. Oh, he sure won't if I can't get this mess straightened out. Well, now, what exactly went wrong? Well, the safe got locked. Well, that's what it's supposed to do. But the money wasn't in it. I put the money down on the desk. I don't know exactly how it did happen. I locked the safe, and I left the money out. Oh, I see. And you don't know the combination. And on the way over here, my horse threw me twice, and, and I lost the keys to the back door. My, my, this just hasn't been your day, has it? Not hardly. And you heard about me all the way over in Porfirio, did you? Oh, I don't guess there's anyone for a hundred miles doesn't know about you, Mr. Kane. Well, now, I'll get that safe open for you. Uh, and I got a little thing rigged up here that'll open the door, too. I won't be able to pay you much. Oh, won't cost you a cent. You're a Texas man, and so am I. So, I know that you do the same for me. You're an even finer man than what they say you are. Yeah, I think so. Me. Uh, oh, Mr. Kane, mm -hmm. that hat? Oh, yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> that cost me thirty dollars. It fits me a little snug, though. Maybe, uh, maybe I need a haircut. <laughs> Which way are we headed, Captain? For Ferio, the bank's been robbed. Not again. Well, now, you can't call that Mexican raid last spring a bank robbery, Chad. Well, they took everything that was nailed down that time. Including you. And your guns and boots, if I ain't mistaken. I hope I'm not interrupting you, Reese. Oh, no, sir, Captain. You just go right ahead. Thank you. This telegram doesn't contain very much information. Do they know who done it, Captain? Didn't say. Well, we ain't gonna find no bank robbers sitting here. Let's go. So long, Captain. You'll never get away with this. I repeat, you'll never get away with this. We already did, old soldier. <laughs> what is you taking advantage of? 
No Texas man would trade on the goodwill of another. Where were you born? Massachusetts. Ah, I might have known. Your day will come. Ah, take my word for it. Your day will come. Now, now, now. There ain't no need in you getting all riled up. Riled? Why, this is an outrage. Making me a party to a bank holdup. If you've got one grain of sense in you, you will return that money. I've said all I intend to. Hey, just a minute. That's my gun. Look, you ain't going no place, old man. You was in that holdup, too. And they'd just as soon throw you in jail as they would us if we was took. Now, make up your mind. You are now in the bank robbing business, and that's all there is to it. Mm. Well, you're going to have to shoot me to keep me here. You'd rather get thrown in jail than get rich? If the great state of Texas does me that injustice, I can forgive them. What if we shoot you? I'd expect it. But you've forgotten one thing, the Texas Rangers. And one Texas Ranger in particular, my good friend Reese Bennett. <laughs> He'll find a clue. He'll track you down if it takes the last breath in him. And meantime, even if you keep me here a captive, I'll never lay a hand on a safe to help any one of you honorary coyotes. What I tell you? You see what I say to you? He won't do nothing. You hear that? He got friends who are Texas Rangers. You hear that? And they're going to be coming after us. You hear that? But we got to shoot this old man. Nah, it's just talk, Sam. But... Hey, Lou, put him in the corner. Don't let him get out there. Now, 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 wait. Now, you're making a great mistake. I'll turn to that. Let me alone. You're not let me on. He sure got a lot of steam in him for an old man. Why don't we shoot this old man and go to Mexico? We got money. We can rob banks in Mexico. What do we need with Texas Rangers looking for us? How are they going to know to look for us? You hear what the old man say? Oh, it's just talk, Sab. Look, I'm going to show you. You come with me. I'll prove to you how safe we are. Come on. Where are you going now? Porfirio. We just robbed a bank in Porfirio. We can come and go as we please. Come on. so happy about maybe it's something he ate you know better than that joe he's probably got something up his sleeve why don't you just come straight out and ask him? all right reese what are you so happy about well if you was thinking about where we was going you'd be happy too huh but Perio. what about it well now don't that bring nothing to mind well it sure does that bunch of mexican bandits had carted off everything they could carry last spring they carted it off but who brung it back well we did chad and <laughs> yeah, well, uh, well, well, don't you figure them folks is going to be some kind of grateful? The way I see it, why, they're going to just make us as comfortable as can be did. Sure they are, Reese. Why, shucks, I know, uh, I know if it was me, I'd, I'd sure rule out a big welcome for the fellas that saved my town. If we have to lay out the price of one beer, I'm going to be just as surprised as I can get. Hmm. Well, one thing they got for Furio is pretty girls. It's a pure gospel. What's the matter with you, Sab? There ain't no one knows we done that. We didn't even leave any tracks for them rangers to follow. And there's no risk. Nobody to shoot at us, because there ain't nobody up around here at night. You mark my word, Sab. By the time we get through with this, we're going to be so rich, we're going to have to build our own bank to keep our money in. And I tell you that that old man is not... Rangers. 
So it is. said there'd be a reception committee waiting for us. There it is, just jumping all over us. Kind of touching, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you just wait and see what happens when folks find out who we are. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Good though. Hello there. You fellas are rangers, ain't you? Uh, the fact is, we are. <laughs> Figured you was. Es Fry, that's me, Es Fry. Yes. Well, uh, I'm Reese Bennett. Chad Cooper, Joe Riley. Howdy. Glad to see y'all. We was them rangers what caught them bandits and cleaned out the ferio last spring. I heard about that. Mighty fancy job. Well, now, that's right kind of you, sir. Well, hope you gents enjoy your visit. I'll see you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Nice fella. Kind of hard looking, but nice fella. Well, this is hard country around here, Reese. You gotta be sick in the head. Bank robbers don't talk to rangers. We ain't in jail, are we? Oh, no, not yet. And not never. That ought to prove it to you. That's why I done it, to prove it to you. The ranger. The one with that voice like a frog. He's a friend of the old man's. That's right. We got to get them friends together. Yeah. He saw what you look like. Now when he talks to the banker. Oh, what can he tell? Who saw us anyway, hmm? Nobody saw anybody. I locked the safe up on Saturday about noon. Came back to work on the books late Sunday. Found it still locked, opened it up, and it was empty. Cleaned out, just like it is now. No broken windows? No. Well, they must have come in by the door. Who else has a key? I have the only key. Well, there sure wasn't any explosion. There's not a mark on that door. Somebody just opened it up. I'm the only one who has the combination. Sure don't look good for you, Martingale. This is my bank. I have nothing to gain and everything to lose if that money isn't recovered. And I resent your... Mr. Martingale, I'm sure Mr. Bennett didn't really mean that the way it sounded. Uh, no, sir. You see, what he really meant was... Uh... Explain it to him, Chad. Well, what he meant, Mr. Martingale... I was... know what he meant, and I don't like it. Uh, well, Mr. Martingale, sir, was there, was there anything else taken? Nothing of any value. The paperweight from off my desk is missing. Well, maybe you'd better look around the rest of your office, Mr. Martingale, see if anything else is missing. Well, now I know what you're thinking, and I can tell you right now, I didn't have nothing. It's slow and easy. It wasn't him that done it, Joe. Please, add it up. It's got to be. It don't, it don't, Chad. It don't at all. Well, it sure looks like it. Let me tell you something. That safe and that door was open just as easy as pie. And what else was missing? A paperweight from the banker's desk. Well, that don't mean he had anything to do with it. Anybody could, could, could take a paperweight How and... many men do you know that can open a safe without knowing the combination? Lots of them. Could you name one? Well, I know for an answer. Well, Anybody else? Well, I'm, uh, I just ain't too good at names. Uh -huh. But I'll tell you this. If Major John had anything to do with this at all, some owl who had a gun at his head or, or some such, I'll tell you that right now. Wasn't him that done it. Could never have been. Could never have been. Never. We'll be in touch with you, Mr. Martingale. I hope so. I wonder what happened to that big welcome, Reese.
Harry. Don't forget the dog, Joe. No, don't matter no uh, Not with you two laying the blame for that bank robbing at Major John's door. Uh, Reese, we didn't say that he did it. Well, saying that nobody else could have done it, saying the same thing. Looky here, that's all we got to go on, Reese. We know he could have done it. Maybe he was forced into it. He'd have rather got himself shot first. All right, then there's only one way to settle it. We send a telegram to Captain Parmalee, have him check up on Major John, and see if he's left Laredo. And have the captain get wondering why we're asking? No, sir. Huh? Somebody's just going to have to ride back. Who goes, Reese? All right. A friend like the Major's worth the ride. And I'll bet you a month's pay he's setting out on his ranch when I get there. No bet. We don't want him to be mixed up in it, Reese. Well, you never could tell hearing you talk. I'll tell you that by, Hannah. <laughs> now, you listen to me, doggy. You stay right here. I got some work to do. You follow them two around for a while. I'll see you later. You be a good doggy now, huh? Is your name Reese Bennett? Yeah, it is. Major John sent me to... Where is he? If they see me talking to you, they'll kill me. Who will? We can talk in the hotel there. Where do you live? Sit still in the saloon. Good. Let's go. Are you all right? They didn't hurt you none, did they, Major? Huh? Oh, if you just laid one hand on him. Just one hand? I'll skin you alive, all of you. Skin you alive and, and, and pad fry your gizzards. No, they didn't hurt me. No, they just hurt my good name. They hoodwinked me into robbing this safe at the Porfirio Bank. Didn't I see you in Porfirio? That's a fact. You sure did. Uh, uh, Major John, you know, we're planning on uh, robbing some banks, and we were sort of expecting you to be opening them safe. He would never do anything like that in his whole life. I'll tell you that right now. How about it, Major? My friend spoke my mind. Oh. Uh. If I was you, I'd start worrying about how much wear and tear this fella can take. Because that's what he's going to have to do unless you quit being so stubborn. Stop it. Stop it. Reese never would have left Porfirio without old Cactus here. Well, he couldn't have, Joe. There ain't no stage from here to Laredo. Where in Blue Blazes is he? Well, I don't know. He couldn't have made it there and back overnight. Not on his horse, he couldn't. Well, maybe we ought to wire the cabin and find out if he is there. Well, now, Chad, unless he's learned how to fly, he couldn't be there. And if he was there, the last thing he'd want to be old Captain Parmalee catching sight of him. Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe somebody here in this town saw him. Chad, we ain't going to talk to everybody in this here town again, are we? Unless you come up with a better idea. Well, now, looky here. Reese left us over at the saloon, didn't he? Right. So if we was to check between here and the saloon, maybe we'd come up with some sign or, or something. Joe, how are you going to tell a difference between Reese's sign and anybody else's in the middle of a street? <laughs> well, now, what about this old dog here? Looks about half bloodhound to me. Hold on. Oh, you don't really think that's going to work, do you? Let's give it a try. Any idea on how to get him started? Well, you just tell him. Oh, 
Hey, now, look here, dog. This is Reese's shirt. Now, take yourself a good sniff and go find Reese. <laughs> he don't seem to be in too much of a hurry. Now, know. just take yourself a good sniff. Here, dog. Have a sniff now. Come on. So go find Reese. Come on. Come on, boy. Go find Reese. Come on. Go find... <laughs> Do I think it will work? <laughs> How about you, dog? And the food, Reese, cooked in wine. And the ladies, oh, all dressed in silk, wearing soft perfume. Oh, that that must have been something, Major, just something. And, and the ladies were beautiful. Oh. Lola Montez would have been thought of as a plain country girl compared to the ladies in New York. Men shopped themselves over Lola Montez, didn't they, Major? Oh, sure. I knew her, Reese. Yeah. My Lola was a lily in the wilderness. <laughs> but in New York, flower upon flower. Oh, Major, that must have been something. Just something. And you'll see it, Reese. No, no, I never will. I never Remember will at the all. cane hasty and fast fastener? The fortunate means? Uh, when I hop off to little old New York, you'll be right by my side. We're going to get out of here. Me and you, we're going to get out of here. And you've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, I never learned how to worry, Reese. Look ahead and hang on tight. That's what my father told me. And it stood me in good stead. Oh, them's wise words, Major. Wise words. It is impossible. Well, it don't make any sense. Lots of little scratches and chicken marks. Them's ground plans, ain't they, Fred? And guaranteed to be perfect. Ah, you expect to rob a bank with a piece of paper. Can't rob this bank without them. Here. Ah, <laughs> oh, this one's gonna take some real figuring. This ain't no ordinary bank. <laughs> Matter of fact, it ain't no bank at all. It's but a sort of a special built warehouse with nothing in it but money. Not the cattle buyers exchange in Rio Verde. That's it. Oh, key God, you got grasshoppers in your head. It is impossible. Nobody has ever. Oh, you got grasshoppers in your head. They sure got big plans, ain't they? Keep over $100,000 in there, I hear tell. More this time of year. Oh. Can't be robbed, so the story goes. I've been there, Major, and you sure heard right. It can't be dead. Why, it's got, it's got walls of iron, just, just sheets of it, and there ain't no windows, and it's just, just one door with no, no handle on the outside. Got to open it from the inside. Day and night, they keep a guard in there. Major, that just ain't no place to be robbed, I'm telling you. Oh, well, now, anything can be done, Reese. Now, aside from that safe, uh, they do have a safe, don't they? But it takes three separate men to open it. Well, now, aside from that safe, it seems to me there's only one problem. That is to get the inside guard to open the door. It's got three combinations. I seen it, and he wouldn't do it, never. Interesting problem. You wouldn't uh, help out them owl hoots, would you, Major? Huh? Oh, no, 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 of course not. No. But it does make for an interesting problem, though. Joe, you really figure that dog knows what he's doing? Well, he sure looks like he's following something. I sure hope Reese doesn't need help in a hurry. Let's go. Never. You stick with that, Major. I can take the best they got. The very best. This is a choice you get to make. And if you don't, 
I'm gonna shoot that friend of yours, and before he hits the floor, you'll be following him down. Now, here's the deal. You string along with us for one more job. I'll turn your friend here and you both loose. Don't you buy any of it, Major. Don't you buy any of it. Shut up! When he talks again, you bang him one alongside the head. Well, I'll talk all right! All right, Major. That's my deal. two stories high, right? Right. Uh-huh. And the stove, the stove in the exchange building, is that the same stove that's on these plans? It's a pot-bellied, about so big. I see. You're not a sickly fellow, are you, Fred? I mean, your, your lungs are in good shape, are they? Well, never had any trouble with them. Uh-huh. <clears throat> well, what shape are the other boys in? For doing what? Heavy work. Uh, we'll need someone who's not too heavy and just a little light on his feet. Well, that'd be Matt. Him and Tuck will be back later this afternoon. I. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> well, that's all right. Now, I tell you, I'll need some things. So you better write them down. There. Right. First, we need three sets of blocks and tackle. And about five or six hundred feet of stout rope. And a canvas cover for the bed of the buckboard. And black shirts and pants for everybody. And get a three-foot piece of canvas beside, huh? And uh, some axle grease. Yes, sir. A couple of buckets full. Oh, yes, sir. And uh, some wooden crates. Uh, how many? Oh, as many as you can lay a hand to. What are we going to do with all this stuff? Huh? <laughs> now, the main thing is to work together. That is the whole key to my plan. Move fast and make no mistakes. That's why we have to practice. Uh, it's easier to rob three, maybe four little banks. Oh, Sab, will you just work along with us, please? I don't like all these plans and scratches. Go ahead, Major John. Don't pay no heed to him. Well, now the first thing we have to deal with are those three guards outside the building. Good shots, every one of them. Well, then we won't let him get a shot off. There's one stationed in the window of the third floor of the hotel, right? Oh, with a carbine. Well, Lou and Sab will take care of him. Now, you two boys go up the back stairs of the hotel to the roof, and you set a block and tackle. And then Lou lets Sab down outside the window. And when the guard pushes his carbine out the window, Sab snatches it away from him and gets the drop on him. Ah, uh -huh. you want me hanging down from the roof? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Very well done, Sal. Hey, you know this ain't so bad. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. Now, what you'll be doing, Matt, is to swing from the roof of the general store across the alley to the exchange building roof. And once you get there, you set up a block and tackle so as Fred and I can get up there, too. All right? Let it go. <laughs> It's fine, man. A little more practice and you'll have it down to a T. You got the best part. All right, don't you worry none, Sad. Next job, you can have it. Well, what do I do, Major John? Uh, you go down the chimney. How? Uh, loop the rope around you, Chuck. Uh, that way, if you lose your grip, Fred won't fall the rest of the way. Here, Mr. 
mean I gotta go down that chimney? Upside down? That's the only way you'll fit in the stove. There'll be a fire in that stove this time of year. Well, now, don't worry. We'll get the guard to put it out. But that stovepipe ain't gonna be as wide as this one. No, it'll be easy once we get your grease down. Yeah, you won't have any trouble at all. Try him off, Tuck, and let him get the feel of hanging upside down, huh? I got the feel of it. Practice, Fred, practice. All right, everybody over here. All right, hurry it up. We've got to go over there now. <clears throat> now, Sab, what happens first? Uh, I come down from the roof. Lou has a rope on me. Uh, I wait for the guard to push his carbine through the window. Oh, that's right, that's right. And is? Uh, me, I, I come driving down the street in, in the buckboard. I, I get as close to the exchange as I can. When I get up there, I fall over in the seat like I'm drunk or something. The guard comes out to see what's wrong. When he does, Matt and Tuck reach out from under the canvas and grab his rifle. Good, good. Thank you. And Matt swings from the roof of the general store over to the roof of the exchange building and lets down a rope for us, huh? Then I go down the chimney. And when I get to the stove, I get the drop on the guard and make him open the front door. And then Major John comes marching in, opens that little old safe. We take the money and... <laughs> right. Now, we've got to see how long all of this is going to take. So we'll just run through it as though we were all there, see? Do I got to get greased down? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Fred. Uh, yeah, I think you'd better. Wait a minute. Uh, here you are. All right, fellas, take your places. Major. Major. Don't do it. Don't do it, Major. Don't do it. Don't do it! Now remember, if you make any mistakes, just keep going. Now I'll give you five seconds. And I'll count to go. You ready? One, two, three, four, five. Go. Hey, 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 hey. What's the matter with you? You're running late. My, my God, let me help you there. Let me get the dinner. There. That's the idea. There we go. Pull. Reese, they're all yours. Hurry up, mate. Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Oh, right, old man. Oh, no! Yeah, Reese. 
case of an ember for that dog. <laughs> Good old. <laughs> yeah. Good old dog here. No, sir, recap. Major John here, he didn't have one single blessed thing to do with cleaning out that Papirio bank. No, sir. Didn't never. That I'm pleased to hear, Reese. Well, I guess that's just about it, isn't it, Captain? I think so. Uh, Captain, I was just wondering, uh, what is that you have there? Oh, they uh, call this a safety pin. Uh, may I see it? Sure. Well, now, Captain, that, uh, that ain't what you said it was at all. That is a John Kane hasty fast fastener. That's what it is. Ain't that so, Major? Somebody beat me to it, Reese. Certainly not, Major. That just goes to prove that your idea was a very good one. Well, it'd take more than that to slow me down. Thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> do you, uh, do you think it's possible for a man to fly? <laughs> <clears throat> Major John, if you say he can, he can. Well, he can, and I'll prove it. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs>